this module, we're going to be talking about variables, and especially what makes variables different in Rust as opposed to other programming languages. First, we'll cover the syntax to declare a variable in Rust. Then we'll talk about mutability, which is whether a variable is allowed to change its value or not. Finally, we'll discuss how every variable in Rust has a type, whether we explicitly annotate that type or not. You're probably familiar with variables from other programming languages. To review, a variable is like a cardboard box that you can label and put data into for use later. Then we write code that operates on the variable name and doesn't need to know what's actually in the box until the program is running. Let's talk about how to declare a variable in Rust. All variable declarations start with the let keyword followed by the name we want. Here we're declaring a variable named x. To give variables an initial value, we use an equal sign and then specify the value we want to assign to the variable. Here the value we're choosing is the number 5. Semicolons separate Rust statements. Once we have a variable declared, we can use it by its name. Here's an example with three variables, and we've built the value of the variable z using the values in the variables x and y. A few more things to note about this code. The main function is a special function that's the entry point of binary programs. It's the function that gets called when we execute cargo run. We're going to talk about functions in a future module. The print line macro is how you print in Rust. The first argument is the format string, and the curly braces in that format string are placeholders for the values we want to print out, which are specified as the rest of the arguments. The standard library documentation has a full format string reference. If we switch over to the terminal and execute cargo run for this program, we'll see z is 11 printed out. Next, let's talk about mutability. One thing that's different about variables in Rust is that, by default, they can't actually vary. Here's a program where we've declared a variable named x with an initial value of 5. Then we try to add 1 to the value and store the result in x. The red line beneath the code on line 3 is the IDE signaling that we have a compiler error on that line. If we build this code in the terminal, we can see the full compiler error, which says we cannot assign twice to the immutable variable x. After we assign the value 5 to x, we're not allowed to change that value. The reason Rust variables aren't allowed to change by default is to help prevent some bugs. Bugs can happen if you look at a value and assume that value never changes, but another part of the program might change that value and violate your assumptions. Instead, Rust encodes the assumption that a value will never change by making that the default for variables. To make sure all parts of a program agree that a variable is allowed to change, we have to explicitly opt in to allowing mutability. The way to make a variable mutable is with the mute keyword. By saying let mute x equals, we're then allowed to change the value of x whenever we want by reassigning to it. After adding mute to the previous example, the program compiles without any errors and prints the value of x as 6. The last big difference between variables in Rust and variables in some other languages is that every variable in Rust has a type. These two variables have different types based on the values they contain. If we want to annotate the type of a variable, we can by putting a colon after the name and then the type after the equal sign. In our previous examples, we didn't have to say that x was an i32 though. Rust was able to figure that out based on the value 5 that we assigned to it. If you'd like to annotate your types as you're learning, feel free. However, most idiomatic Rust you'll see doesn't annotate types except for situations in which Rust can't figure out the type you want without an annotation. If you're ever unsure of the type of something you have, a trick to figure that out is to annotate the variable with a type that it definitely isn't. For example, say we have a variable y that has the value true, and we want to find out the type of the value true. We know that it's definitely not an i32. We can annotate y as type i32. The compiler error we get tells us that the type of true is bool. In this module, we've covered how to declare a variable, how to make a variable mutable with the mute keyword, and how every variable has a type. 
In the next video, we'll talk about primitive data types. If you're enjoying this video, you'll be glad to know that it's just a small part of a much larger course that can be found on Manning's live video platform. Live video is host to a variety of courses for software developers and engineers and features helpful tools like our interactive transcript and intuitive integration with our live books. For this course and others, visit livevideo.manning.com.